Walter loves calling me Mom Merck. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mallory Merck, and you are watching Uncommon Radio. And listening, actually. Hi, I'm James AP. You're watching on Comedy Radio. Today I'm here with Mallory Merck. Hello, I'm Mallory. So, right now, what are you, 17, 18? Yeah, I'm 17, about to turn 18. And in August. you've grown up in New York your whole life, right? For the most part, yeah, but I went to school in Jersey for a while. Most of my high school, I was in Jersey. And I feel like growing up in New York, like most of us in this room know, like you kind of get a unique experience growing up in New York. Like you kind of age a lot. Quicker, so to someone who doesn't really know what's that like, like what would you kind of say like, like the five most kind of essential parts of growing up in New York are? The five most essential parts? Well, I or would like, say... Or like, not even five most essential parts, like, but like the five stories that every New York kid has. Like, yeah, yeah, up yeah, in yeah, yeah. Like, in I would say one of them is the winter, which we all know the winter is bad. And like, just in general, like New York weather, I feel like feels different. Like in the mm -hmm. summertime, it's like a different, whole different world. And in the wintertime, it's a whole different world. And I feel like people who visit, they don't get the full experience. Like in the winter, it's a completely different like place. Y'all get that sense that we grow up too fast. That's definitely a thing here. Sure. And I think we all just kind of feel like adults by the time we're like 12. Because <laughs> most of us, by the time we were, I'd say like, I don't know. For me, I think I was eight or nine like taking the train to school by yeah, myself kinda like, all like yeah and a lot of people would look at that as as different and uh, they would be scared to send their kid out into the world at that age but i think it's just necessary because new york is small but it's a big playground and it's like a big a big concrete jungle that is true i think the city raises you to a degree as well even people you get to know over time like you know the person who works at your deli that you see every day the even the tra even the people working at the train that you see every day or just your teachers and stuff like that i feel like they grow on you the same way a family member kind of does like i feel like with new york thing. like socially like it doesn't matter who you are but especially with kids like everyone kind of comes to know everyone yeah and like social circles it, don't, it doesn't <laughs> matter if you if you go to school in jersey if you go to school in brooklyn if you go to school uptown downtown that's everyone true. in some way ends up meeting each other and i feel like in some ways that's kind of brought you to where you are with your career and so how would you say like that has all like yeah aligned? i'm thankful for the social climate in new york because it's it it makes kids productive i think and there's a lot of opportunities because kids from here are really creative and there's a lot of opportunities like since since we were young to like just build build and create like even doing this on Common Radio is like your guys' outlet of your creative art and stuff. And for me it was music and same with a lot of kids. A lot of kids here make music. So I think that really was helpful. Like just when I wanted to start making music and I didn't feel like I had like okay, I only play guitar, piano, certain instruments where I could make a song or make a beat. Like I felt instantly like I have friends who can help me, you know, make my vision come to life. So that was like so important. So like the friends I have today are the same friends I've had for a long time because they helped me build, you know, they helped me make the beats, they helped me do videos or whatever it is. It's like they help. They were the ones like we were the ones in, in the room all together, just like brainstorming. And, like everyone kind of finds their own yeah, skill and then yeah. ends up bring it and together. And we all have a, a reason to be around each other. Like. It, we all turn from just friends and then you look around and it's like you have a, you have a friend who's becoming a successful painter you have a friend who's becoming a, sex, a successful producer or rapper or singer so that's really cool and I, I feel like in New York that climate where we all know each other it makes it like a lot of cities aren't like that I feel like like we really all know each other yeah. like you won't go somewhere to a, a party or like somebody's house where you won't like already know the people there you, you might not have even met them or you feel like oh i met you one time mm -hmm. we already know each other it's like 
on a first name basis thing so and so how did you actually finally start making music i guess my first time in the studio was a couple of my friends just brought me to the studio and um that recording at home i had been recording at home before on headphones with a laptop or like a phone and a laptop that's how i did it and i would just send my voice memos to like garage band and like arrange it myself and that was like really work it was working to an extent that like i could make the music i wanted to but i was using i was using beats from online i was using beats from songs that i really liked i didn't know that was like an irregular Probably, thing to yeah, do at the time yeah. i was like making songs over like erica badu beats and like 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 really random stuff so i think like the first time i was in the studio was at quad studios in um times square and um ever since then i was like i have to go in the studio like i have to do that again and so i i started that was kind of at the time i started modeling so the money i made from that i like took it to the studio and then i had i met a friend of mine who engineers at blastoff studios and then I met my band and everything just kind of worked out. Like I had beats to write to and then I had actual songs to take to the studio. In that early part of your music career, were you always like, this is the type of sound I want? Or did you play around at first and kind of be like, you know what? I want to make hip hop. I want to make R&B or whatever. Yeah, I definitely was experimenting. That's for sure. I think the a couple of the first songs I ever made were definitely more of like a hip hop vibe. Mm -hmm. like. I not even necessarily rap, but I would just like freestyle, kind of yeah. like flow, and then that's kind of where I found my style because I like to I like to flow and I like to like do more hip hop influenced cadences. But I'm a singer, so mm -hmm. I, I guess that's the heart. That's what R and B is. That's really you know the heart of what I do is like R and B music. So yeah, I, I was experimenting at first, but I think I. I still haven't found my exact sound, but my sound is, is a variety of things. Like even when I make music, I can make, I can be in the studio for a week and I can make three songs that sound like they're super, you know, heavy bass influenced or like kind of knocking like in your speakers and they're kind of upbeat. So I can make three other songs just from scratch with a guitar with Ian or Hunter from my band. We could just make something from scratch. And then it's like, it's so beautiful in the same way that my other music is, but I, I like to do both like electronic influence stuff and with the with Ableton and Logic, whatever, I like to start there, but I also like to do completely instrumental tracks, so. And musically, like, what is it like working on your own verse, working with your band now, and I guess kind of like the, the different, like, approach or processes, process when you're, like, in the studio making a song, like, when you're dealing with, by yourself or with a group of people? Um, my process? You're asking me, like, what my Like, not how your like, process, but, like, with, when you're by yourself, you're like, it's all up to you. Like, you get to decide yeah. everything. This is where I want to go. But with, with your bands, like, I don't know. Everyone yeah, got to get their voice in. They, they kind of boost me, though. Mm -hmm. They kind of, like, like they're very, very, very helpful in anything I want to do. Like, if I, I, I could call them at 3 in the morning, and I'll call Hunter and be like, oh, my God, I just heard this weird, like, this weird song from like the 20s or something that I want to like kind of I want to emulate that in our next like song or whatever and he'll just get me so that's been really helpful like and I can go over to their house with any idea and they'll help me piece it together and if they have ideas it's like we will just we'll just sit in a circle with a guitar a drum a piano and just just like start with a guitar riff or start with a piano melody and just like bounce ideas off each other and bounce flows off each other and it I, I don't know it's never been a pressure yeah. pressurized situation some people they feel pressure when they when they work with a you know a full band but to me I'm just blessed I've known them for a long time and like they just get me so I love getting new beats and stuff so I guess like either situation is, is I don't like one or the other better so yeah. And I know you just touched on it and that so at the same time that you were like in the early start of recording music you're also modeling was there ever a point in earlier in your career even now where you're kind of going back and forth like all right which which one do I really have to focus on now in time management or like or at a point in either one where it's like, oh this is really starting to take off in this direction yeah. one has to get put on the back burner and yeah. how did you deal with that definitely well modeling was my first entrance into the art 
world in general. So when I started making music and I started taking off my first project, MMNHH and stuff, when that when I saw the love that it got and I played a, sh a couple shows, I was really encouraged. I guess I realized that that could be a career because mm -hmm. I never saw my music as like I could I could pursue this for the rest of my life as a job not mm -hmm. only just something I do so modeling to me was more of like the on the books like it was more official mm -hmm. and like okay I know I'm doing when I'm a model I'm representing somebody else and my music was my way of like okay now that I'm not being re represented by anyone else this is just me like this is this isn't I'm not wearing anyone else's clothes I'm not doing anything I don't want to, like, I'm, this is a completely a reflection of just me. The modeling jobs will come, like, they will, they will still want to see me, but they probably would love to see me even more if I was Maui Merck, just what I wanted to be, which was a musician, so. So what's it like to, like, work under Rihanna, and, like, what exactly do like, you do with her? Um, my first time working with her was a paper magazine shoot in September of last year. It was such a unique experience because it felt like I was just hanging out. Like we we had the shoot and it was a bunch of our friends, a bunch of people I know. Um, and so we were all just waiting, waiting. We were all dressed and getting our makeup done and whatnot. We were just like, oh. And Rihanna was in a bodega right outside and she was shooting in there the whole time. So they transformed the bodega into like a set. She was shooting in there the whole time. So when you entered the bodegas, when you got to see Rihanna, so all of us were like, when do we get to go to the store? Go to I've never been more excited to go to the store in my life. I just want to say that. That was like the best trip to the <laughs> deli ever. Like, nah, but, um, so we, um, so they were like, okay, guys, it's your time to go shoot. So it was me and, and, um, and Ducky thought, so it was like her and me, and they were like, okay, come on, guys. So we go in, I see Rihanna, and, and she, I think she could tell that we were just so ha like so happy to see her. She just started laughing. She was like, come on, guys, it's going to be easy. We're just going to be um, talking, and they're going to take pictures. So they didn't, I, I guess they left out the part where they were going to take video, too. So it was like they were taking pictures, and I thought, just pictures. But the whole time they were filming video of us. So it was like we had to pretend like we were buying things from the deli from Rhea. So it was like she was, she was, behind, the, she was like behind the counter, like, what do you guys want? And me and Ducky were like, let us get some backwoods. So she was like laughing at us because we didn't think they were they were filming. We thought it was just pitching. So for the sake of it, we were just creating conversation. We were like, let's get some backwoods. And she was like, which one you want? Like the, the light ones and the dark ones, blah, blah, blah. So we were just like, we were just chopping up, laughing with her, crying, laughing. She was actually so funny. Like, and um, so she just, she just made us feel super at home. And I could tell from that moment like she really, she really had a, like a special place in her, her heart for like me and Ducky and Slick and and just a few other people like that she ended up then using in the Fenty Beauty campaign. So it was like, I just felt like after that day, she like followed me on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be, I know this can't be my last time seeing her, like I need to see her again. So then when I got asked to do the Fenty campaign, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is real. And then I knew from that point that Rihanna was going to take over the world. I was like, oh my gosh, she's about to, she's about to go crazy. So she literally took over the makeup game. And I was just like so happy to be a part of it. Like if there was anyone to be my, my big sis. Kind of those, like relationships. Yeah, like, like, if there was anyone that I would really say that I would want to be like or would, mm -hmm. would want to be as successful and, and also as poised and educated and like, and just so in touch with with her fans, it would be Rihanna. So I'm just like so thankful that I'm on her radar and part of like you know part of her vision. So. And do you think that's kind of like I, I know you can't speak for her, but do you think that's kind of what has made her such a like, kind of monumental figure in pop culture right now? Is because she always knows to look to the youth and can kind of relate to the youth so well. Yeah, I think I think that's the reason we all love her is because she's so kind of relatable, like that bad girl energy. That's that's what that's what like that that's her. It's such a, a perfect reflection of her and I, I I think I think kids I think young people in general, like they really fuck with her because of that ability to to ride that energy of like I'm edgy and you know? I'm I'm who I want to be and, and nobody can tell me different but I'm also everyone's favorite like everyone loves me and I make amazing music that anyone can relate to so it's like 
I think, yeah, I think that's why she's on top, just because she's so real and, and she's just killing it. And she's just like, she's like, I'm bad, I'm beautiful, and nobody can tell me shit. So I think, yeah, I think that's the reason why. Okay, so what was it like to, to like, have you said that it's always cool to take something and make it yours? And for you, you said that you find Gucci cool. So what was it like to finally be able to work with Gucci and show people how you could make it yours? Well... First of all, when I first worked with them, I was like blown away. Like I never, I, I it was, I imagined it, but I didn't think I would, you know, do it so soon. Like I was like still young when I did my first Gucci campaign, and I'm still young. So I was like really appalled. I was like, wow, okay, they're definitely, they're definitely cool, because they were started working with a bunch of uh, cool friends of mine as well. So I was like. Um, I knew I had to take the opportunity to represent myself and and like show people what I was about as well. So I just think I don't know. I think Gucci did does a good job of representing what we think is cool in the mm -hmm. moment. Even if it doesn't look like it, when you style it yourself, I think I think um like, they kind of give a good blank platform for, for yeah. no matter who you are, but to kind of take yeah, it. Yeah, no it matter out. who you are, you can really wear Gucci, I think, and make it look, make it like, look like fly in yeah. your own way. So, um, the last campaign that I did was the uh, Unskilled Worker X Gucci, which was painted and it had like very sad looking faces and stuff. But it was really cool. It was like modern art, and um, we shot it in. In like a in a magazine store and in an arcade, so I think Yo, shout like, out to the arcade in Chinatown because that shit yeah, used to be the fire. Arcade in that Chinatown. shit used to be fire back in the day. That shit was really <laughs> fun. I used to go there as a kid. <laughs> For real, yeah, it was really cool. So I think they ta they do a good job of tapping in like to the future of fashion and also the originality of of, of being of, one of the classic kind of yeah, houses and staples labels. Staples in fashion. They they do a really good job of keeping it classic and keeping it keeping it. Beyond Gucci, what was it like to kind of also show like kind of your own little inspiration in other big brands like with the Easy Season and kind of get your own little twist? Yeah, there? that was cool. Um, that was one of my first modeling jobs I ever did. So shout out to Kanye. <laughs> I mean, love Kanye on this side. So um, that was really cool, and I got to speak to him directly, sort of for like two seconds. He like thanked me and. Um, Actually, a friend, old friend of mine, Luca, set that up, which was really cool. So I, it felt really organic to me on set. I was definitely scared and definitely a little bit nervous because I had never done something like that. But it felt it felt like legendary. Like mm -hmm. when we arrived, it, we had to take a separate we had to take a separate flight from the airport in Arizona to like the middle of nowhere Arizona, and um, I was like. This is what every shoot is like, but even the models were like, no, this is really next level. Different. Like, this is different. This is Kanye. So I was like, wow. Like, even for my first, for my first really introduction to the modeling world, it was like the most official thing possible. They were so on point. Everybody had to walk around in all white. We had the oh, white robes, the, the white flip flops in the desert. It was really cool. So that was like that. That definitely molded my view of the fashion world for the rest of my career because I was like, okay, now that I've worked with Kanye and his super, super strict vision and his his um, amazing interpretation of his clothing line and, and what he wanted to do. So I was like, I feel like now I have an understanding of what artists, what real artists, real fashion designers, like what it's like to put their vision to life. So I just appreciated it even more after that. So, yeah. So what do you have? Coming up next, I know you have an album coming in. Mm -hmm. So what else? What else do you have coming? Let the people know what, um, what's next. On May fourth, I don't know if this is this is gonna be out by May fourth. On May fourth, I have uh, my single coming out. Emeralds is coming out, and then at during the month of May, I'm not exactly sure what day yet, but my album is gonna come out. And right now, I'm deciding exactly how many tracks to put on it, but it's like double the size of my last EP. So it's not an official album. I'm not releasing it with um, a, uh, a label or anything like that. It's it's, it's all my, on my own still. And a lot of the songs on there are Harry Kahuli, 
produced, so shout out to them. They're the best. I think they bring the best out of me too. So it's like I'm really excited for this project. It's very, it's experimental, but it's also I think I released a lot of this type sounds and the type flows that I wanted you, my fans to see that I felt like they didn't they didn't get to see as much on MMHH because that was really from the heart. So I wanted to kind of go a little bit harder on this EP. So I'm really excited about it. So that's coming in May. Watch out. And it'll be available on all platforms too.